Hey there, today I wanna to take you through all the steps on how I've been flipping beds. Well, I did a video last year about how I was flipping beds on my farm, and it's changed a little bit, and I always try to simplify things whenever I can. And so I just wanna show you what we're doing this year at Raleigh City Farm, and how we've tried to streamline it as much as possible. And I'll talk about tools, and process, and amendments, all that kind of stuff in this one. Um, and we're in the tunnel today, because we have three beds to flip. And I'm gonna go through the process with you guys. So, this bed here is one of the beds we're gonna be flipping, and it's already been, cleared out, this one had radish in it. So uh, the beauty th about flipping beds after root crops is when you pull the root crops, the bed's basically empty. So there's a few weeds in here we're gonna pull by hand, but that's about it. And then we got a bed over here. This one had green onion in it. So again, they got pulled out when we harvested, so we don't have to do anything there. And then this bed over here uh, had baby red Russian kale in it, and uh, Tessie's pulling that out right now. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about baby green bed flips as well. There's a few strategies involved um, and pros and cons of them, and so we'll get into that as well. Well, the first step in turning over a bed, flipping a bed, whatever you wanna call it, um, you know, getting from one crop to the next, is you gotta get the crop out of the ground first. Now, if you're doing root crops, like carrots or radish, when you harvest them, you'll be pulling the crops out of the ground, so you'll have an empty bed when you're done, which is great. Green onion's another one which I just mentioned. If you're doing larger crops like um, you know lettuce and kale and stuff like that, uh, I will just cut the, uh, the plant right below the soil surface. Cut it right there and that way it'll break down and it won't regrow. And so you wanna try to keep the roots in the ground whenever possible. Uh, it's not a hard rule, but as I said, whenever possible, it's because it, it's beneficial. And the reasons for that, um, when you pull the plants out, it creates more disturbance in the soil, which you don't want but there's a lot of good things that happen because when the plants are growing, the roots go in the ground, they're creating channels and pathways in the soil and keeping it looser. And so by keeping the roots in the ground, they tend to keep the soil um, fluffier and you know more, more access for other roots, worms, moisture, all that kind of stuff. There's also a lot of great biology that goes around, goes on around the, the roots. And so by keeping that in the ground as long as possible, you keep that biology active until the next crop comes in and then that starts over again. So it's best to leave the, the roots in the ground whenever you can. Now, it depends on what's coming out, what's going in, what you have time for. So for example, this is a bed of uh, baby red Russian kale that we've gotten, I think, four harvests out of, and we need the bed, and we need it today because we have peppers that need to go in the ground. So we're just gonna pull this out, and we're just pulling it out by hand. And there's a lot of reasons that this is not ideal. One is it takes a lot of time, and it's really annoying because you're bent over. Um, and you know, you're, you're taking out the roots, which I just talked about, and creating a little bit of disturbance, but that's what we're gonna do today just because we need to get this bed flipped, um, and we have the, the labor to do it today. So let me show you another method uh, about baby greens. Well, in the no-till space, there's a lot of discussion about how to flip beds of baby greens, and so I'm gonna try a couple things. I've usually just been pulling it out because I'm always like, we need the bed, but what I did here is I have a three foot wide piece of landscape fabric, and I have this covering a bed of arugula. And what we did before we put the tarp down is we just put down a little bit of compost and watered it really heavy to try to encourage the breakdown of uh, the crops that are in here. So this has been about a week. And let's see here, kind of see what's going on. Yeah, most of it's broken down. So I think that looks pretty good. So this has been a week, uh, but the reality is that it's probably, it hasn't been super hot here. I think in the middle of summer this would happen a lot faster. Um, but I think the key here is adding a little bit of compost and getting it wet. And it's a very passive thing, which is great. Um, you know, and we're leaving the roots in the ground and all that uh, biomass is just breaking down and going back into the soil, which I also love. And so, yeah, I don't know how long it's gonna take normally, but we're gonna try to work this um, process into our you know, what we're doing here at the farm as much as we can because it's very passive, as I said, and I think it's better for the soil. So after you get the bed all cleared out, uh, we run the string lines, and we do this every time we flip beds, and not everyone does. Um, I just really like straight lines, and 
It makes things a lot easier and it doesn't really take that long. One thing that's key with this, and I mentioned this in a lot of videos, is these, these just wooden stakes that I got at Home Depot that mark out the beds and they stay in the ground all the time. So there's always strings around. We just run them. It takes like, you know, a minute per bed or maybe a minute and a half per bed. And I think it makes a big difference. It, it just allows everyone to, to plant straight and to build the bed straight and keeps the wood chips in the right place, all that kind of stuff. So we got that ready to go. This bed's cleared and we got the, the string lines up. So let's talk about broad forking. We are currently broad forking on every bed flip this year. And what I noticed at my farm over the last couple years was that you don't have to broad fork every time. It's really depends on how your soil is. I think for the first year, maybe two years, I think it's beneficial, but it might be block to block or bed to bed even, um, or maybe you wanna make sure you broad fork before you put carrots in or you know things like that. So it's not a has to happen, but I, it is a very awesome tool and it can help you out a lot especially on new farms when you're trying to loosen up the soil. But by keeping the plants in the ground and keeping soil biology active and, and photosynthesis happening, your soil will get better over time if it's a cash crop or a cover crop or whatever. So we do broad fork on every bed flip this year. And there are beds that are better than others, right? Some of them are better than others. Um, but for right now, it's a benefit for us. Um, so we'll go through and, and broad fork. That'll be the first, first step after uh, after stringing it up. All right, so after broad fork, we're gonna be adding amendments. And let's take a minute to talk about amendments here. And these are the things that we're using right now, but I don't want them to be like what you use necessarily. You need to know your soil, your amendments, what your soil needs, all that kind of stuff. I've used this compost for a couple years now, and so I'm pretty comfortable with it and what I like to add and, and things like that. And so uh, these are my recommendations for us. And don't just like use these blindly. You need to learn about all the different things that you're using. And one thing I've been talking about a lot lately is try to use as many inputs as you can from your local area. And if they're from a waste stream, that's even better. So like our compost, for example, it's made up of a lot of food waste from North Carolina, so that's great. Uh, the feather meal that we use is from a, a chicken facility in North Carolina. That's great as well. So let's get into these amendments and what we're using them for. And uh, the first one is alfalfa meal. And this is literally the ground up alfalfa hay. And it's an awesome all around fertilizer. It's like a 322 or 222, really balanced, but it's just full of nutrients, really helps soil micro the microbes and all the that stuff going on and uh, yeah, it's just a great all around fertilizer. The next one is feather meal. So this is literally just like ground up feathers from a local chicken facility. There's probably a little bit of blood meal in there too. Um, this one's just pretty much a straight nitrogen addition. It is a slow release nitrogen though. It's like a 1200 or 1400. And then elemental sulfur which is just literally sulfur. And we're adding this for two reasons. One is um, our sulfur was a little bit low in our soil and it also helps lower the pH. And we have high pH soil and our compost is also high in pH. So that's what we're doing. In terms of volumes, uh, we're adding, or weights, we're adding five five gallon buckets of compost on our beds and they're 50 foot by 30 inch beds. And we're adding three pounds of alfalfa meal we're adding three quarters of a pound of feather meal and a pound of sulfur. And that's what we're doing on our bed flips for now. And we'll keep an eye on it. So let me go show you guys what that looks like. All right, so just finished broad forking this bed and we're gonna put down compost. And one thing that's helpful is if you just get your five buckets and you space them out ahead of time. So then when you're putting down the compost, you kind of know how far they should be going. So for us, we're doing five buckets on a 50 foot bed. So every 10 feet. So, and one thing that's helpful is if you just try to spread it across the bed, because we're gonna be tilting it in. So, put down the compost and then the amendments. And then it's time for the amendments after the compost. And this is those, the alfalfa meal, the feather meal, and the sulfur all mixed together. And we just go through and apply this by hand. All right, so after the compost and the amendments are down, we use the tilther. I've talked about this in a lot of videos. 
but it uh, just gives a really nice tilt to the soil. It only goes down about an inch, really no deeper than a rake. But it, the really nice thing here is it also really helps incorporate the, uh, the amendments and the compost so that we get a nice even bed. Last step really here before putting the drip back in and planting is the landscape rake. This is a 36 inch rake on a 30 inch bed. So I just pull it at an angle and just try to keep the level the same and just go across the bed. So that's how we're flipping beds this year at Raleigh City Farm. It's a pretty simple process. This bed is ready to go for whatever we want to put in here. We could direct seed, we could transplant, we could put drip in here overhead. We flip every bed the exact same way and that goes along with the, uh, the flexiculture idea. Hopefully you guys saw that video. And I tried to simplify this as much as possible. I actually, the crew here, everyone can sort of, you know, run right after each other and get it done really quick. I actually had to slow them down a little bit today to let me film this. But uh, yeah, we got it done. Um, and just to go through some of the steps again really quickly, just to recap, we're gonna remove the crop and you can either do by pulling it out, um, but whenever you can leave the roots in the ground, I think that's beneficial. So cutting it at soil level, right below soil level, or if you can tarp it and let things break down that way, that's also really good as well. Um, and then we broad fork, we add our compost and amendments, we tilt it and then we rake it and we're good to go. And I really am a big fan of the string lines and the permanent beds. And uh, you get a very professional looking bed like this that looks great and accepts pretty much anything you want to put into it. So that's great. And uh, anyways, uh, I just figured I'd update you guys with this. This is our preferred, uh, my preferred way to flip beds. And uh, just, it works out great. And look at it, it looks awesome. So hopefully you guys took some of this, some good takeaways from this. And this is helpful for you as you're thinking about maybe working on some of your systems or looking for some more ideas about, you know, how to flip beds. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.